we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the crankshaft around. We've just grabbed any bob weight, don't care which, because they all weigh exactly the same. And notice that we're using hardened guide pins for the alignment. By bringing the crank pin to the front, I'm going to come across, let it line up. If you remember, I put the small attachment nuts here to the bottom. Just get one started. Once you get one started, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, if you want, you can go ahead at this time, grab the other side, start it, but do not position them. I'll talk about that in just a second. Now, we've got one done, so I'm going to walk over here, grab the next one, and again, this journal is already in position. Come underneath it, come over the top, let it line up. Grab one of the capturing nuts, drop the capturing nuts. We'll pick that up in a minute. And we're ready for the next nut right here. Now again, I'm going to be a little redundant while I'm burning up a little time. And simply tell you that quick nuts are very attractive at this stage of the game. But I want you to be very careful with that thought because it is a safety issue and there is no remedy for that kind of event in the event of the technician getting hurt. Now, trust me, the law will not work to your advantage because you put those on there. Next thing we're going to do is add our, other, our third piece in place. And you notice I had rotated the crank around. Everything lined up. entire job of screwing these nuts on, I'm telling you, it's a safety issue that should not be violated. One of the reasons we use these guide pins is to ensure that we maintain the moment center. All right, we're going to have to go fishing again. Here we go. By the way, the quick nut wouldn't have made any difference there. You can drop test them just as well as you can these. Let me find that other one. Again, back to the hardened pins. What we do there is we ensure that when we capture the bob weight onto the journal, we just want to cinch it in place so it doesn't move. We don't want to over tighten it trying to cause distortion. Calibrated nuts are used to try and assume that the parallels will stay the same. Fact of the matter is they get them close. It's pretty hard for you to take those and over tighten to cause deflection so we know it maintains parallel. Now, during the position, in the old days, everybody was stuck on the fact that you had to index the journals. By indexing those journals, the theory was that they would know exactly where they were referenced 90 degrees. Well, let me tell you a little secret. It's not a true statement. Because whenever we take a bob weight, regardless of how we do this, there is a mechanical center line and then there's a balance or what's called a moment center line. As I change the diameter of this, that moment center line is always the same. That's the difference between moment match versus calibration. We want to ensure that these two have a mechanical center line and a moment center line so the forces on this side and the forces on this side are always the same, regardless of rotational position. Thereby, we don't worry about the application where we're talking about indexing. The reason indexing was brought in was that there was errors in the bob weight. As long as you put the bob weight in the same position every time, you'll never find the error. Well, that's just because in the old days, they didn't have the machining standards that we have today. But there is one critical thing that has to be done, and that is each weight has to be proportionate in the horizontal position to each other. So what I mean by that is, if I take these weights and I slide it over this way to the left, and then I took this one and I slid it to the right, then the crank analysis would be confusing to the machine because it sees different weight times distance. What we want to do is we want to take this little tool right here, set it down over the journal, push it so that it runs in complete parallel, 
snide this one, snide this one, and pull it off. Go to the next position. Move it away. Push it up against it. Snug it. Snug it. Pull it off. All right, again, we're going to take the weight, push it up against the stop, snug it, snug it, move on. Rotate the crank, move this one back, set it over, push it, lock it, and lock it. Now, it's critical that we put these in the same position or we will get an erroneous reading, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people talk about crankshaft balancing, where they put the weights on, they've taken them off, they put it back on, they don't get the same reading. The reading is compounded by either the horizontal positioning or the flaw within the bob weight that its moment center is different than its uh, mechanical center. So we just don't have that problem. All right, now after we've mounted the bob weights, we already know where their horizontal position is. We're going to go through and do a quick safety check just to ensure that everything is snug so nothing's going to fly off. Again, safety is a mandate of any operations because you do have an open architecture here where the operator is going to be in zone and unfortunately you may have someone near. If something should come off there, it could cause bodily harm. We have to be very careful. All right, here we have a deal where we were at 200 RPMs. Remember before we had the bob weights on for quick sampling and also going in and checking, checking the belt track. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to now target 500 RPM. Again, the 500 is going to enunciate along with zero. Zero is the current speed, obviously. 500 is the target speed. We're going to ensure that there's no other conflict. The drill's out of the way. All the tooling is safely positioned. So it's going to start it out. Now, again, what it's going to do is it's going to go for the target RPM at 500. Once it arrives there, it's going to go ahead and start analyzing. Now, if there's any conflict here, such as inadequate lubrication or whatever, you may see an alarm come up here and say, Ver, speed is not consistent. You need to stop, put the proper lubricant on it. But as it goes through the analysis, it looks at the left side, the right side, and then it acquires all the data. And as you're seeing right now, it shuts down once it has data and it reports. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over here and we're going to identify. Let's look at this right side first. We bring it up to TDC. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the drill over. Right. Bring it into position. I'm going to get a extended starter drill. I'm going to go ahead and set my speed. And at TDC, I want to come down, I want to mark right here. So what we'll do is we're just going to come in, start up. Now you see right there the drill didn't locate. I'm going to release, relock. Obviously fix it watch while we're at it. Before we drill, I want to try and protect the bearing area. So I'm going to stop. Paper towels, shop towels, I don't care what. We're just trying to protect the greased area. Start up. Get a start going. I'm going to go back now, turn it off, and I'm going to move over by releasing the lock, keeping the starter drill in place. Over to this position here, I'm going to lock. Basically do the same thing, just turn it around, I'm going to turn it to TDC, there we go. We're going to go ahead and drill, and just get a starter position. Now we're going to drop this drill out, park it, 